So the question is, is the coronavirus nothing or is it the end of the world, <laughs> right? And so uh, me and my, uh, my camera guy, we were sitting here talking and um, I just wanted to do a video and just kind of weigh in on the coronavirus and talk to you a little bit about it, give you my thoughts here and there and things like that. So um, I seem, you know, it seems to be very broad span uh, the way people are looking at this. And uh, so on the coronavirus, um, I've seen what you've seen. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm like you, all right? So I've seen that, uh, that they, whoever they are, um, they're only doing this to force chipped vaccines. Chips would be being able to track you, being able to analyze whether or not you've had all your vaccines, things like that. In other words, it's just doing it to force vaccines. Uh, and then I've also heard that the whole thing is fake, right? That people aren't really getting sick. Okay. Uh, it's the end of the world. See all those casket liners and people are like taking pictures of casket liners on the back of trucks. And I'm like, oh, perfect. <laughs> um, China is lying about their numbers. Way too few and way more. Did you hear that 20 million phones have been shut off in China? They're, they're thinking that that's how many people really died. I don't know. Right. Uh, it's not the coronavirus, it's the 5G that's the problem. While we've all been on quarantine, they sneak in with white vans and they erect a 5G network. And these things burn your eyes out and, and I don't know, they separate the oxygen from the blood and you die just like if it was the coronavirus. And so, <clears throat> and then I also hear trust the plan. You heard those things? All right, make sure you comment and let me know. <laughs> um, no, all jokes aside, you know, it's, uh, if you wonder, um, back in the military days when I was in the bomb squad, um, there was always a meter that all of my team would look at. And when things got really, really crazy, Tim, I had a nickname, but, uh, but me, I'd laugh. Okay, I'll never forget it. It was the very first time. I had, um, I was down on the ocean floor. I was in that big hard hat rig, okay? I'm talking about the big, huge helmet. It's called a Mark V. And, uh, and I think the whole suit weighed something like 239 pounds or something. And, um, and so if you've ever gotten on the bottom of a, a ocean floor or the, a river or something like that, it stirs up the mud and you know you can't see as well. And so I'm sitting down there in the mud and I was uh, working on something and, and I literally could rub my fingers on my, my, uh, the lens and, uh, and I couldn't see my fingertips. Okay, no, there's, there's no visibility whatsoever. And, uh, and so I'm just down there and I start laughing, right? And there's a comm center inside your head. And so you can, you know, like they'll say, uh, Red Diver, this is top side. What are you laughing about? <laughs> because they get concerned that maybe I'm breathing too much of the wrong gas down there. And so, uh, so they'll say something, you know, like, Red Diver, this is top side. Why are you laughing? And I'm like, this is just really funny, right? You can make no sense of anything. And why not laugh? Because, well, it's kind of scary. And so that's the, I'm not making light of anything. It's just a thing for me where it does no good to get like real worried because you can't really think at that point when the bomb is sitting there and <laughs> you bump it and it starts ticking and you're like, <laughs> uh, it does no good to get real worried. It doesn't solve the problem. The lighter you are, the better you can think. And so the rule of the thumb, our rule of thumb on uh, bomb squad work is, First you do this, and then you do this. And every time you feel that locked up feeling, just go, first I do this, and then I do this, and then I do this, all right? That is how, coming from somebody who's skydived and defused bombs and spent times underwater where you can't see anything, uh, kind of blinded, you know, that's, that is what you do to, uh, to walk yourself out of that feeling of, I can't move, okay? Um, so 
here's basic, here's fundamental, okay? So, so I've broken this into two. One is, is that what do you do in network marketing? And the other one I've done on just basic human to human, okay? And uh, so the basic is, is that evaluate what is. Don't try to solve the mysteries, okay? So a lot of times you can be looking at so much that you actually forfeit your ability to think ahead. So that's what I mean by that is, is evaluate what is, okay? So decide what can affect you. And what's the probability of that? Okay, so let's take up this 5G thing. So um, based upon what I've read on the 5G thing, if, uh, if I find out that they put it in my, my kid's school, while we were on quarantine, I'll unenroll them. I will let that school know, no, 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 we don't do this, right? I don't know 100%. Um, I don't have all the knowledge that some of the experts of the studies that I've read, I don't have all the knowledge. I really don't. If I'm going to err, if I'm going to commit an error here, I want to commit an error in towards safety because those precious little boys of mine I can't easily recreate them, okay? So therefore, I'm going to err in safety. So that's what I'm talking about is, is that decide what can affect you and the probability. And so it's just making sane decisions like that ahead of time so that you're not at the pressure point that you've made a decision. If you get new data that, that trumps that one, okay, fine, All right? So... And then you can make that, that, that shift in decision, but it's better to decide what can affect you early. Make a list of it. You know, if you're married, uh, sit down with your spouse and make a list of these things that w can affect you and what's the probability. If, you know, like, you know, I've told you guys I live up in the mountains. I'm not worried about 5G here. And so that doesn't affect me. Where I live doesn't affect me, okay? Nobody in my neighborhood would allow one of those things to come up. <laughs> Um, okay, so prepare for plan B. What I mean by that is, is that just your basics, okay? So you got water, you got food, you got shelter. And under shelter, you've got clothes, which includes shoes, boots, uh, walls, roof, okay? So that's just a fundamental to think about. So remember, I'm doing a, okay, what do I do first, and then do this, and then do this, okay? So water, food, shelter, clothes, walls, roof. Right? So that's kind of like what you're looking for, just as basics. And then work out how to transport your food, your gear, your kids, your parents. Okay? And, and that, that means packing those bags. Okay? So what, what you really hope is, is that this thing blows over and you just unpack those bags. That's what, what we all hope happens. What you don't want to do is if you have to move and you then have to pack. Because now you haven't had that time to think, do I need this? Okay, so this is going to be too heavy, so I'd rather have this instead of this, right? You had, you, this is what happens when you can prep early, okay? And, um, and if you did not prepare and you don't have enough supplies, then what you're going to have to do now is you're going to have to start conserving. And so you go to the grocery store and they say, you know, you ask for something, you know, toilet paper, please. And they're like, only three. <laughs> All right, so you're going to have to be conservative on two of them and pack one of them. You see what I'm saying? In other words, you don't go in there and rake the thing. All right, because now you're being a bad community member. So um, just, uh, you know, like work your way to where you have rations, okay? And then uh, there's great resources. I'm just being a friend to you and just trying to get you into an action step. You've got to make that step to do plan B. Find out what it is that could affect you, all right? There's great YouTube resources on the web uh, that, um, you know, and I'm sure they'll be coming out with new videos. If you didn't, here's what you do. Um, but you got to look at your terrain. You got to look at your environment. If you live, you know, in a 60 building apartment, um, you know, like try to figure out where you're going to go and, um, and things like that. So, okay. So if 
it's only a virus, right? Um, then it probably won't last very long. Okay, so uh, all through the history of man, we have had viruses. We've had uh, we've had things like this before. All right, and um, and so good. If it's more than that, if it's all of the sensationalism um, that, man, they just get such kick out of doing, you know, like it's, it's at times like this that you realize the capability of the media to exasperate or to exaggerate, to make a hundred times more than what is. Okay, so... Um, I'm sure you've seen the uh, the camera that they show, you know, this full hospital, but it's actually not even that hospital in Italy or whatever it is. Anyway, so um, so if it's more, then we'll deal with it, and that's the way you need to think about it. So you really, what I'm trying to get you to do is is evaluate what is, what can affect you first, and then all of this other stuff. If it's more, we deal with it then. All right. And then uh, and there's a rule that we had. It says, don't fight it, decide it. Okay? So when you're looking at stuff and your best friend says, oh my gosh, you got to see this. Right? And you're like, what is it? And you click on it and you're like, Ugh. and then you say, well, I got to do my own research. And so you go to two other links and then, you know, it's like three hours later, it's two o'clock in the morning and you're watching this silly video. And, um, I don't, I don't mean to lessen the importance. You know what I mean, right? So you're watching a video. And, uh, and so um, you can push back and say, no, 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 no. Yes, there's conspiracy theory. And yes, there's conspiracy. Okay? And um, I don't know if you know this, but the history of the word conspiracy theory was a, basically created by the CIA to counterattack people who questioned whether or not the story was true about how JFK was killed. Okay, so it was a conspiracy, and they were trying to countering it by invalidating and making less of somebody who said conspiracy theory. So that's what I always think about when somebody says, is that a conspiracy theory? Oh, that's just one of those conspiracy theories. Well, what do you know about it? That's not the point. <laughs> it is the point. Okay, so how can you call it a conspiracy theory? Try to lessen it when you don't know. Okay, so that what I mean when I say don't fight it, decide it. Okay, so allocate the time and say, all right, after I got plan B set up, now I'm going to decide and I'm going to look at that. Okay. <clears throat> okay, in between yes and no forfeits time. Okay, so when you get in one of these situations where you're like, should I do this or should I do this? Um, while you're debating it, you're forfeiting time to evaluate another one or another thing. Okay, so just it's one of those things where I like to like go walk around the house or run around the house and get like all like up a lot of energy. And then I'll come back and I make decisions fast. Okay. <coughs> So the next thing I want to talk about is social veneer. It's just something that, uh, it's what I call it. In other words, it is a pretended reality um, or fake status. Okay, so you can, you can kind of get the idea of a fake status. And so a person, you know, like thinks they're something big or something like that. Uh, some of that gets kind of peeling off when you have emergencies going on. And... Um, so pretended realities, and so some of the people on social media and things like that, uh, where you might have thought them as being a very stable person or, or something like that, you start seeing uh, some bubbling and peeling, uh, just like if I got water on this, uh, this veneer here. It's not real wood, okay? So, uh, so it's not very solid. So one of the things is um, entitlement reduction is real, okay? So... Um, so people get a particular puff chest, if you will, on what they're worth and what their value is. Uh, maybe it is their education. Maybe it is their, um, you know, the car that they have or something like that. So 
Um, freedom to leave my home. Okay, so that was uh, an entitlement reduction for me. Okay, I'm like, I mean, I can't go out. What? You kidding? Um, grocery store doesn't have what I want. What? Okay, so I had this feeling that I had entitlement that. When I went to the grocery store, they would have that, right? So, uh, so some of this entitlement reduction began to boil off of me. And I'm glad it does, right? It like brings me back to center. Um, I'm worth blah, blah, blah. You know, my, uh, my camera guy comes into my office and he goes, Hey man, how's it going? And I like look over at the stock market and I say, well, I'm worth $60,000 less this morning than I was last night when I went to bed, right? So my, I'm worth less. Okay, not worthless, but worthless. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I deserve blank because blank education, job duration, seniority, etc. All of this social veneer, this entitlement begins to peel off of a society and it needs to do it every so often. And for some people, it's a very harsh thing. Okay, so maybe they get a hey, you know what? Um, where the company has decided to not continue and so you don't have a job, right? So maybe, and then they're shocked and so that entitlement is much bigger than what I've described here. I was just kind of inching into it. Um, and then another one is that awareness of truth is rising over bias. Now, what in the world does that mean? Um, so let's say that a person says, I hate guns. We do not need guns, blah, 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 right? So that's, the, that's what they've been saying. So they have a bias about that. And, but then <laughs> um, 3.7 million background checks happened in March. And a background check is basically the request to purchase a gun. And so they have to do a background investigation. And so 3.7, all right, you got to go all the way back to 2015 in order to find an earlier time where it went up, but not that high, okay? And so you kind of get the idea here. You, you can imagine that a lot of these people might be new gun owners. And suddenly they're like, what? <laughs> um, I gotta get a gun. I gotta, I gotta protect my family. I, I gotta preserve myself. I gotta protect myself. There's idiots out there, right? In other words, that's kind of the thing. And then those of us who have had guns for a long, long time and have been drilling on them for a long, long time, we're like, uh-oh, new guy's got a gun. <laughs> that, that's, that's a little scary for us because um, he just hasn't drilled it. He doesn't trained it and things like that. So, so there is awareness of truth rising. So there's truth coming to us and we're more open and aware of it and we ditch our bias because truth is coming in. And so what's really happening is, is awareness is coming up. And it's an awesome thing, all right? It really, really is. Because too many times, bias is the rule, okay? So somebody has told you to hate somebody or somebody has told you to, you know, something like that. The media trashes this and trashes that. Well, that person, the color, the whatever, that person could save your life. They could give you that bottle of water that you need. All right. And so it is something that that comes off. And yeah, it's rude, but uh, but I think it is necessary at times. Um, and you're going to see also people say, you know, they've said, I don't like network marketing. I don't like network marketing. I don't care what it is. I got to feed my kids. OK, so when they can't flip houses, when the job that they thought was so secure wasn't secure and they're now on the streets and nobody else is hiring and maybe that person turned 48 years old or something and is you know like we're we're gonna hire newer people hmm it's humbling so what happens is is that that is awareness of truth rising over bias all right and so you'll see it in just the openness um and then uh, I'll just tell you something else about that. A lot of people wonder, how in the world did you create the success that you created way back in the day where I created 65000 a month within my second year and then 150000 by my fifth year? Well, I hit right in the center of a recession. 
And so there was a whole lot of people who were looking for something to do because banks were collapsing and real estate was falling through the floor and, you know, it was just a mess. And so there were a lot of people who were open. But I got to tell you that every time you get one of those, oh man, it's going to be so much better. It always comes with a, I don't know, a little little stink to it too. Because at the same time, yeah, there's more people open, but they don't have any money. Okay, so it, it, uh, it works itself out, but, you know, you just work with whatever you got. That's the way I kind of go from it. Um, and then uh, distance from customer to disposable. Um, okay, so this is going to be a little bit of a, uh, a conversation for you guys. So I want you to just picture, uh, I didn't bring my wallet in, but just pretend this is my wallet, okay? So, uh, so I'm going to be a customer. You are a person who's selling me something. And so, uh, so I think, man, that's going to make my life better. Yeah. Okay. So here. All right. And so I'm going to pull out my wallet and I'm going to give you money. All right. So you are the closest person to the customer. You are the least expendable. All right. So a company does not get rid of people who make sales. Because in the worst economy, in the worst conditions, in the worst situation that you've ever been in, what do you have to have as a company? You gotta have people generating sales. And so almost everything else is disposable. So while I've been talking about the pipeline for a long time now, I'm going to scoot this heater back. It's a uh, get warm. Sorry. Um, I've been talking a long time about this thing called the pipeline. And, um, and if you've listened to it in any of my videos, you'll see it. I always talk about the pipeline. I, I think I've got one to show. Um, but the pipeline is basically you generate a lead, you contact the lead, you set an appointment, you do a presentation, you follow up until they say yes or no, and they either become a customer that you get to serve and then you get paid, or they don't, and they slide off to the other end saying, I'm not interested. And that is the law of any organization to expand. And so people who know how to do that are the most valuable in a society that wants to get an economy moving back up. That's the truth, okay? And so if you have downtime, study up, learn to generate leads or learn to contact them better, okay? So don't use this time as idle. Once you've created your plan B, you got your stuff ready to go, you know what, what you're gonna do, you know where you're gonna go, you got maps for it and everything else, great. All right, next. Okay, I got to drill. I got to train up. I got to get better. Okay, because when you come out of the gates here, you got an opportunity. All right, I'm just, I'll tell. I'll talk about that in just a second. But I just wanted to share with you that if you are a very far way away from me, who's paying, if you're a long ways away, then you're most susceptible. We don't need a bookkeeper because we don't have any sales coming in. If I was the owner of a company, that would be the attitude that I would have. I would be trying to trim anything that is not vital to sales or, or to income coming in because I've got bills to pay. I've got this to pay. I've got that. I've got inventory sitting in here. I've got to move. It's got date. It's got expiration date on it. I got to move it. And so I want you to get really clear in your head right now that there's nothing more valuable than somebody who can bring customers to a company. You will never be out of work if you get good at it, okay? Never be out of a job and never be <laughs> um, needing money. All right, so I wanna uh, walk you through something and uh, it's just a real logical thing. Um, I sketched this before we started. So a lot of times, when people describe an economy, it is really confusing. But I started my discussion with what you just saw. It is because a whole bunch of people who probably haven't owned their business, but they become majors in economics. Um, and I'm talking about major teachers or professors or something. Well, <clears throat> they've never built their own business. And so they just kind of have a theory about it. And so what I just described to you, now they will tell you supply and demand. 
is the center of all business. And, uh, and I, eh, it never, never hit me because uh, I, there's going to be a ton of supply, but does, is it going to make my life better or not? That's all I care about. That's the only reason I'll ever reach in my wallet and pull it out and, and buy. So is it going to make my life better? All right. So here's the way it happens. So this right here, we call this thing, we can just call it the pivot point if you wanted to, but the, the economy is rolling like this. It's rolling up. It's going, it's going, it's going, it's going. And, um, and then at some point, it tips. All right, there's early indicators and things like that. But the bottom line is, is the consumer not spending as much. So a company, whatever the company is, let's just say it's Amazon for this conversation. So the company is on this real cool trajectory, you know, like let's say they're growing 10% or, or I don't know, whatever percent per quarter. And they're growing and they're growing and they're growing. Well, what's the first sign that the consumer is spending less? Well, it's when Amazon drops a little bit. Not quite as profitable. So, but it starts with the consumer not spending as much. Okay, so you could connect that to jobs, maybe. But the bottom line is, is not spending as much. And then number two is business has excess inventory, excess employees. And then three, less profit, missed earnings. When you miss earnings, investors sell your stock. And so normally from the top, it comes down, okay, we got to get rid of some people, right? Um, if they don't, and even if they do, they start defaulting on business loans. And then, I'm sorry, I got to go to four. Okay, so when they missed their profits, their stock price went down. Okay, well, who was a stockholder? Let's say you have a consumer over here. Their 401k is invested in Amazon. It drops. Okay, so now that person is going to say, I'm going to spend even less because I just lost $60,000, okay, or 16. Um, and they lost money. All right. So now that drops. Now we go to seven. And so this company defaults on a business loan. Um, bank earns less. You see how this trickle thing goes, okay? So banks earn less. Then you have this person who says, I want to sell the house. Honey, I think it's a good time. All right, it's at the top of the market. Things are not looking so good. I want to sell my house. And so he sells his house to get some cash. So it's just, there's some equity in it. So they get some cash out. The neighbor sees this and goes, huh, uh, we better sell our too, Ethel. <laughs> um, and so they sell, Ethel sells the house, okay? So now we have panic, right? And so this is the way an economy rolls over. So when you look at the coronavirus, what are we looking at? Well, there's nothing that'll quite stop a, a, an economy as the whole country is, stay, is said to stay home. <laughs> well, that pretty much, okay, so Amazon might get some business, but, uh, but the person down the street who, you know, and things like that, your community is going to stop. Okay, that's what happens. I... You know, somebody was just saying that the um, some mayor or something like that announced in Los Angeles and says something like, um, if you call the police, we're, we can't show up, you know, under in, uh, unless it's an extreme circumstance or something like that. Well, I bet that drove gun sales. You see what I'm saying? In other words, there was this idea that the police were going to protect me, but there's one police for every 100,000 people. And then when the mayor announces, well, you know, we don't we we can't have police come come to your place, right? All of a sudden people need guns because they realize it, right? So, now you can see the way this all happens and you are a part of the economy. So, you you want to help pick the economy back up because people who do not have you know, like these employees, they don't have the money. And, and so 
the, they can't buy things from the businesses. If businesses don't get people buying their stuff, then you get laid off. And so it's very important for us all as a group to be purchasers of goods and services as soon as we can. Okay? So that's just kind of a responsibility to like get the, get the economy moving back. Um, okay, so now I'm going to kind of shift a little bit more over and focusing on network marketing. So um, network marketing companies don't take hits. Okay? Um, and what I mean by that is, no, their leaders pause doing the pipeline. So if you don't want to see a hit, then you're going to have to work extra hard to overcome the hits. Okay, because people who are out of work, they will buy less. Only makes sense. So what you've got to do as a leader is, is that you've got to replace those. And you say, whatever you're going to say as an excuse, it's just an excuse. Okay, really and truly, because it does you no good to blame it on a corona virus that you can't even see. Okay, it does you no good. Yes, you've got a thing that you can point to and say it's because, but it doesn't do you any good. The only thing that's going to do you any good is to get out there and talk to people, do the pipeline. All right, no business can afford to lose their best marketers and sellers. So if you're one of the top producers, if you're one of the top leaders, it's very vital. All right, you are a key role. You are the star player in the Super Bowl. Okay, so you can just imagine you've got the Super Bowl, you got the people on the field and you have the bleachers and you have the stands. You're a player. Okay? Everything stops if you're not out there. So it's really, really important that all the leaders get in there. Okay? So, um, and this is true for all businesses. And so um, be mindful of that where you got a company that, you know, like they just... They just didn't have a good business model to begin with. They didn't have enough margins. They didn't have this or they wasted too much money on this one campaign. And so they were just fragile at the moment, but it was at the wrong time. And so, you know, these people get displaced. Good people get displaced. OK, and so that's people who are out there in the marketplace looking. Uh, strong companies will boom in poor conditions. All right. And so um, when I consulted a couple of hundred network marketing companies, I saw where some companies would just do the right thing. When, you know, like I remember this one time um, I, was, I was talking to the CFO, chief financial officer, and he said the craziest thing. OK, um, he the, the company was really new. And he said, you know, like, well, I put a dime over here for uh, that one day that we would be able to open Japan. And I put a dime over here and I put. So in other words, every product that he sold, he would take a dime and put it in a fund. All right. So that he would be able to pay that two million dollars that it takes to get into Japan or that 13 million dollars that it takes to get into China or whatever it is. Okay, and so companies that ran frugal and they hit something like this, then it's primed to really explode out the other end where other companies who were being a little bit um, sloppy um, and, you know, like uh, just spending wastefully, then uh, then those will be the people who were will be in most trouble. Okay, and so you're going to see maybe new companies burst out as, I mean, I'm not talking about new, I'm talking about what used to be a real leader may end up being highly surpassed by somebody, a uh, company that wasn't well known yet or something like that. Um, and I got to tell all of you that new leaders are being decided on now. All right, right now, because it is, it's in the time of crisis that you really identify leadership. So how stable are you? 
Okay, you want to be a stabilizing factor. So people are kind of wobbly. They don't know what to do. You know, do we keep on going? You know, like, so I get text and Skype messages and WhatsApp and WeChats and, you know, it's just blowing up because people are looking for stability. All right, and so you got to be there for those people. And then the other thing, and this is so vital, guys, were you truthful during the crisis? They're going to look. All right. So if you were looking, oh, we're going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Unbelievable. No, that's a cheerleader. That's not what they want. Okay. so they want stable leadership. They want somebody who's really looking after them and they will they will trust you. Okay. so uh, so make sure that that you don't invalidate a concern that they have because they wouldn't be bringing it up if it wasn't a concern to them. And so you kind of address it. All right. You. You say, okay, let's talk about this. You know, what if? What if? Well, what's the worst thing that can happen? What's the worst? Oh, okay, so the company could go out of business. Okay, all right, that's a part. However, like, but whose business is it? It's our business, right? So um, the company, um, that's what I meant when I said the company doesn't take a hit. No, it is a whole bunch of people agreeing that we're not going to do the pipeline today. You see, a network marketing company is I'm not going to like minimize it. I'm just going to say something and then I'll, I'll, I'll cover it. So a company is a logo and inventory. That's what a network marketing company is. The sales team is what generate the sales that feed all the employees with money. Okay. So we're kind of important. And That is the reason that I'm talking the way that I am and I'm telling you that you need to be out there. You need to be making it happen. It's not the company's fault. Somebody looks around and says, wow, man, it's not very busy around here. It's your fault, right? It's it's us. It's our company. It's not the company. That's a logo with inventory. All right. And this is um, my wife came to me and she said, um, she said, babe, what should I do? And I go, first, your mom. Second, your wife. Third, you can do business. And so, and it's because we both are working and then I can keep on. And, uh, but these little guys, they need mama. And the reason that I do network marketing Okay, so it's the primary one. The reason is because my kids are just incredible. My family is incredible. It's, it's the unit, right? And so this is the time, and the kids can sense something, all right? We joke on social media about what it's like to have the kids home, but they've got parent problems, okay? It's like, man, parents always in my hair, always tell me to sit down, always tell me not be so loud, always tell me to go off my video games. Like, they've got parent problems, okay? So, you know, just, like, recognize that things are different, hug a whole lot, and add a lot of value, okay? So now is the time to not go out and, and hype the coronavirus and use it in a hook to try to get people into the business. Nope, that's not the time. No, it's tacky, slimy. Don't do that. Better to just call up, how you doing? Care about you. How's your kids? How old, you know, like just really get in touch. This is the time, okay? So the people are at home. They're not as pushed right now. So uh, so that's my recommendation to you. Be a stabilizing force. Hug your family often because they're the only people that you can get within six feet of or whatever. And so um, that's, um, I appreciate you a lot. I thank you for watching. And if you like this, give it a thumbs up. If you want to share it, um, if you like it, please share it. And uh, if you haven't considered subscribing, you might do so. Thank you for watching.